Ivor the Engine by Oliver Postgate and Peter Fermin. The first story. Not very long ago, in the top left-hand corner of Wales, there was a railway. It wasn't a very long railway or a very important railway, but it was called the Merioneth and Lanticilly Rail Traction Company Limited, and it was all there was. And in a shed, in a siding, at the end of the railway, lived the locomotive of the Merioneth and Lanticilly Rail Traction Company Limited, which was a long name for a little engine, so his friends just called him Ivor. Now, in the morning, Jones the Steam, the engine driver, would come down over the hill. Morning, Ivor. Jumping cold this morning. Then Jones would light Ivor's fire, fill up his coal box, and then, when Ivor's boiler was boiling, he would make a pot of tea. Then, when he had finished his tea, Jones the Steam would climb onto the footplate, open Ivor's regulator, and... Out they would trundle. Out of the shed and out into the bright morning air. Jumping cold it was too that morning, but bright as a pin. And Ivor felt glad to be alive and steaming. Down to the signal box. There was trouble. The signal was set against them. They could not pass. Owen's not awake yet, Ivor, said Jones the steam. Give him a blow. Beep! Went Ivor's whistle. Owen jumped out of bed. Is it early you are, Jones the steam? No, it's late you are, Owen the signal. Pull your little lever back. We got work to do. Up went the signal. Beep! Off they went. Up the hill. And down into Flanniog Station. There was Dye Station, the station master. What is the forest today, Dye? Oh, coal for Grumbly Gasworks. And there's this parcel of fish for Mrs. Thomas at Grumbly. You know, if you wouldn't mind. I know. I'll take it in with Ivor. Oh, I wouldn't do that. She'll want it fresh, not fried. All right, I'll put it on the coal. She can have it black. Couple up the truck for me, Dye. Right away then, Jones. See you later, Ivor. Off they went to do their day's work. Out of Laniog Station and along the top of the hill towards Tanny Gilch. That was Ivor's favourite run. He loved to look down the valley and see the trees and the stone walls and the horses. To see the big wheel of the pit spinning and far away, bright in the morning sun, the sea. Clompity clompity over the viaduct, through Tanny Gilch, past Miss Figgins the drapers, past the working men's club, past Jenkins the builder and decorator with the ladders lean on the house, and beep into the tunnel, the dark, damp smelling tunnel on the way to Grumbly. By the time they had delivered the coal to the gasworks, it was late in the afternoon. Jones left Ivor on the siding above the town and went down to take Mrs. Thomas her parcel of fish. It wasn't dirty except for the paper, so it didn't matter. Ivor stood there on the siding in the quiet summer evening. He felt tired and drowsy. Then he heard the singing. Oh! It was lovely singing. It was the Grumbly and District Choral Society practicing in the Congregational Hall. Ivor listened, and it seemed to him as though the hills and the valleys, the streams, the trees and the gasworks were all singing together, singing their praises to the golden evening sun.
Ivor listened until they were finished. And then he stood very still in the silence, remembering what he had heard. You asleep, Ivor? asked Jones. Time to go home. And all the way home, Ivor remembered the singing of the choir. And he wished, oh, how he wished that he could sing with them. The next day, Jones the Steam went into the station master's office at Laniog. Die, he said. I'm worried about Ivor. I've plenty of steam and a good fire going, but he's just not pulling right. Well, there's only one thing we can do about that, said Die Station. Take him to see the chief engineer at Pontypool Roads. What? Out on the main line? Ivor's never been on the main line. Oh, I expect he'll be all right if we both go with him. It was a long way to Pontypool Roads, and Ivor felt very nervous and important as he chugged along the main line. He was a bit puzzled by all the signals on the big gantry, but the signalman came out and waved him on into the great engine shed, where the chief engineer and his assistants were waiting to inspect him. They undid his boiler door and blew through his tubes, they took his pistons apart, tested his valves, and they tapped his little wheels with a hammer. But they could not find anything wrong with him, not anything at all. The chief engineer looked puzzled. That is a perfectly good little engine, he said. There's nothing wrong with him. It's my belief he is upset. You haven't spoken harshly to him or blamed him for something he didn't do, have you? Oh, no, sir, we wouldn't do that, said Jones and I. Well, you had better take him home and try and find out what upset him. There is nothing wrong with Ivor's works. So they took Ivor home. Beep. <laughs> decided to try an experiment. Jones took the coal to Grumbly Gasworks as usual and left Ivor on the siding just as he had done two days before. Then he went down into the town, not to take Mrs. Thomas some fish, but to meet Di Station, who had come over on his bicycle. What is this all about? asked Di. I left Ivor on the siding about this time the day before yesterday, explained Jones. And ever since then, he hasn't been well. So I thought we could try it again. Listen, said Di. The choir is singing. My wife's brother-in-law is choir master, said Jones proudly. There's distinction now, said Di. And don't they sing lovely? Listen. They listened. And up on the siding, Ivor listened, and thought it as beautiful as the last time. More than ever, he wished that he could sing with them, but he knew he never could. He was only a railway engine and couldn't speak, let alone sing. The only noise he could make was a silly little whistle. And as he thought about it, he wept. A single dirty tear welled up in his window and fell onto the sleepers. Look, Di, whispered Jones. Ivor is weeping. Oh, so he is, said Di. It must be a terrible thing that would make a railway engine weep. 
Jones' esteem sat on Ivor's step. Now then, Ivor, we'll have a guessing game, he said. One whistle for no, two whistles for yes. Are you tired? Beep. Is it this place you don't like? Beep. Is it to do with the singing? Beep, beep. It is. Right, we are getting somewhere. Is it... Uh, is it... Uh, oh, I can't think of anything, Di. Is it you want to sing in the choir? Asked Di. <laughs> oh, be quiet, Ivor Bach. You will wake the whole town, exclaimed Jones. Oh, Di. There's a strange thing now. Ivor wants to sing in the choir. Di looked doubtful. I never heard of a locomotive singing in the choir, he said. There may be regulations. Well, I don't know, said Jones. I think we had better go and fetch Evans the song and ask him. So Jones' esteem went to fetch Evans the song, who was choir master, and Jones' wife's brother-in-law as well. Evans the song listened to Ivor's whistle. Beep! Evans the song scratched his head. Oh, dear, oh, dear, he said. That's a minor half-tone and uh, a bit crude, if I may say so. I don't suppose we should come across that note more than once a year, if that. I mean, it might be very useful to a Chinese choir, but not for the Grumbly and District Choral Society. I'm sorry, gentlemen. He turned to go. Mind you, he added, if there were a good ordinary bass note... That would be different. We're a bit thin in the base since Eli the fishmonger went to university. Well, of course, that was very disappointing. But Jones' esteem and Dye Station did not give up hope. Next day, they went to see Mr. Jenkins the builder, and he took them to see Mr. Morgan of Morgan's Amusements. Mr. Morgan had an old steam organ that was once on his roundabout, but he was not willing to sell it without knowing what was to happen to it. Evans the song says that Ivor might be able to join the choir at Grumbly if he has proper pipes to blow instead of his whistle, explained Jones the steam. Ah, now, that is something different, said Mr. Morgan. He went over to speak to Ivor. Ivor, he said, you can have the pipes of my old steam organ as a present. It was a fine organ, a famous organ, and it cost me a lot of money 70 years ago. So look after it. Blow it gently, and God bless you. Mr. Morgan wiped away a tear and went back to his fun fair. They took Ivor and the pipes back to Flaniog, and Mog the plumber fitted three of the organ pipes in place of Ivor's whistle. Now, Ivor, said Jones' esteem, give us a blow, but, like Mr. Morgan said, blow very gently. <laughs> There's resonance for you, cried Mog the plumber. Gentlemen, said I station solemnly, we have succeeded. On behalf of the Merioneth and Lanticilly Rail Traction Company Limited, I thank you. From then on, everything went fairly easily. Evans the Song brought Mr. Davis, the president of the Choral Society, to hear Ivor's pipes. He was delighted. Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Ivor will be a credit to the choir. Such good tone, too. I haven't heard a steam organ like that for years. It's nearly as good as old Mr. Morgan's roundabout. Well, as a matter of fact, began Jones. And then a terrible thought struck him. What about head office? Here they were, arranging for Ivor to join the choir, and they hadn't asked permission. He ran into the office. Oh, die, he shouted. What about head office? Oh, that's all right, Jonesbach, said Di calmly. I telephoned them this morning. Mr. Williams says Ivor is welcome to join the choir as long as he does his work too. 
and the company will pay the subscription. Oh, die, you're a seven days wonder, shouted Jones, and he danced out to tell Ivor. Well, Mr. Ivor, the engine, Mark, how does it feel to be a member of the Coral Society? <laughs> sang Ivor. That day's work passed in no time, and soon it was evening, and Jones and Ivor were heading over the viaduct towards Grumbly and Ivor's first choir practice. Ivor suddenly felt funny in his boiler. Oh, dear, quite nervous he was. They pulled through Grumbly Station and rolled down to the siding. There stood a group of people, and they were all smiling so friendly that Ivor quite forgot to feel nervous. Evans the song spoke to the gathering. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, it is my pleasure to introduce a new member, Ivor the Engine, bass. <laughs> There you are, like I told you. He's only got three notes, but he sings those beautiful. Now, let us sing. Evans the song conducted. They stood there in the quiet evening and they sang. And Ivor sang with them, very softly at first, because they were new pipes and he wasn't used to them yet. But it was wonderful, just as wonderful as the first day he heard the choir. And Ivor sang with them, just as he had dreamed, but never thought he would. Jones the steam was there and proud he was of his little engine. Ty Station, Mr. Jenkins, Mog the plumber, and old Mr. Morgan the roundabout were all there. And standing at the back of the crowd was a tall gentleman in a top hat, Mr. Williams, the head office come all the way from Marioneth in his Rolls Royce, just to hear his locomotive sing in the choir.